Welcome, hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about the five motorcultural things we learned about Paminda Nagra and reveal those highs and lows. And hopefully it will inspire or even motivate you as we only judge a person by their character, not race, color or religion. So please join our motorcultural family if you are new. My name is Bobby A. Said. I am the founder of The Emma Show. As you can see from these articles, Praminda didn't have an easy life. Let's hear from Praminda Nagra, who was extremely gracious and happy to accept her Emma honor and flew over from the US as she was based there whilst filming the ER TV show. Oh my God. Um, huh. I couldn't, hadn't uh, prepared a speech, so I'm kind of um, totally doing it off the hoof. But um, thank you so much. I'd like to thank Emma for this, um, Emma's for this wonderful honor. I'd like to thank um, Oxford Film and Television for um, taking this production on board. I'd like to thank Catherine Waring for doing a great job in producing and John Sen for just being a wonderful friend, director, and for his just eternal support. Um, and who else? And Neil Biswas for his wonderful script. He gave me such a great challenge to work with. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Number one, hard working. Praminda Nagra was born on the 5th of October 1975 in Leicester. As Praminda Kar Nagra, she was born to Sukha and Nadra Nagra, who migrated from Punjab region of India. In the 1960s, she is the eldest of four children with two brothers and one sister. Praminda attended Saw Valley College where she played the viola in the youth orchestra, as well as having appeared in her first theatrical production. Just a few months after sitting her A-levels, Praminda was approached by her former drama instructor, Jess Simmons, about becoming part of the theater production company that they had set up. In 1994, she was cast as a chorus member in the musical Nimai, being shown at Haymarket Theater at the time. Although originally being cast as a chorus member, just one week into rehearsal, she was chosen to replace the lead actress who had previously dropped out. Despite having to perform with her arm in a cast, it was her quality of acting as well as singing that raised her above the other candidates who could have taken the lead. Number two, self-discipline. After deciding not to attend university and instead pursue her ambition of becoming an actress, Praminda's first theatrical job came in 1994 when she was cast as the princess in the Theatre Royal Stratford East production of Sleeping Beauty. Following this and after working with several small Indian theatre companies, Praminda's career eventually led to appearances in radio and TV. This defined her career for the most of the 90s. Despite a lack of theatre training, she eventually signed with a London-based agent, Joan Brown. This led to roles in the popular medical drama Casualty, the TV film King Girl and three-part drama Turning World and many more. In 2002, Praminda co-starred alongside Keir Knightley in the comedy drama Bend It Like Beckham. In this film, Praminda's character Jess defies her traditional seat parents to pursue her dreams of playing football. This small budget film swept across the world, showing not only that women can, but that all women can, regardless of race, religion or background. Praminda was quoted as saying, if I can inspire someone to go in a positive way and pursue a dream, it can only be good. This became Praminda's breaking role and would quickly become the first of many. Following this, Praminda can be seen in popular roles such as featuring in ER, Agent of the Shield and 13 Reasons Why, to name a few. Number three, persistence. Over the years, Praminda has been very incredibly open about her experience regarding discrimination within the industry. In an interview in 2021, Praminda explained that she has been turned down for Rose because the project already had an Indian person in the cast within the industry. Especially in recent times, conversations about diversity are seen more as a way of getting a 
box ticked, as the same remark would not be said for white cast members. Paminta went on to say that things have moved on in terms of diversity within the industry. However, she has still been in rooms where people have stated that's not going to sell because there's too many brown people in it. In another interview with Authority magazine, Paminda explained the importance of diversity on screen. I think it's important for people to see themselves represented on screen. It allows people to think, yeah, I can do that. We have a diverse world and we should see that. It allows people to have something to, to relate to. A story that is a good story can be relatable to all people, regardless of background. Despite the conversation being had and more people than ever using their voice to be heard, the industry is making truly little progress to combat discrimination, with Emma promoting this cause since 1997. The personalities that want an Emma have universal qualities that underlines their multicultural goal to entertain everyone and refuse to be pigeonholed or typecast to fulfill some stereotype unlike some other award ceremonies. Number four, positive outlook. However, in 2020, a breakthrough happened. Parasite became the first non-English language film to win at the Academy Awards. Not one, but four awards going to Bon Jo Ho for Best Picture. Best Original Screenplay, Jin Won Han, Co-Writer, Best International Feature Film and Best Director. This was a huge step forward. However, there's still a long way to go until the industry can call itself diverse. The fact that Squid Games has originally become a global phenomenon for audiences that highlight how universal stories connect. Number five, conviction. In 2018, along with film director Shekhar Kapoor and Braminda launched an animation with Water Aid, which explained the water crisis and the effect it has on girls. The animation tells the story of a teenage girl who walks eight hours a day to collect water for their new husbands. Although a fictional story, it is based on the extremely rural issues of poverty, lack of access to water and child marriage in North India. Worldwide, one in nine people lack access to clean water. India holds a staggering 163 million people and roughly 81 million women living without clean water, close to home. This makes India the country with the highest population without the basic resources of water. Parminda has also supported the work done by the charity organization of BJ Amaraj. This foundation has brought hope, help and healing to the defenseless and innocent victims of disease, tragedy and circumstances in India. In terms of personal life, in 2009, after a seven year relationship, Parminda married photographer James Stenson. Two years later, she gave birth to their son, Kai David Singh Stenson. Parminda has said her son is the thing that drives her to get up every day. In 2012, she filed for divorce, but her career is strong and her son is healthy. In summary, over the years, Parminda has been incredibly open about the experience regarding discrimination within the media industry and has continued to challenge the diversity issue, still being shown on the silver screen. Is the industry now including minorities on screen for their skin color to tick the crucial diversity box or are they generally looking for minority talent that can also entertain a global audience beyond any one ethnic group? Why don't you leave us a comment and let us know if we have missed anything in her crucial, incredible life journey. Would really appreciate a like or even a subscribe and if possible, please donate on Patreon, however little the amount, to support this channel's ongoing mission to undertake multicultural campaigns. And remember, it's what's inside that counts, a motto we have used at the Emmas. As Praminda has shown, we all need to help the poor, as she has done through WaterAid. So, until next time, thank you for watching and keep it multicultural.